breathing. And I would just go piece by piece. Are you man enough to, to breathe deeply while you talk this way? And so bringing something to something else and in this intentional way sometimes really changes it. Here's Charlie Brown who says, This song always depresses me. It brings back such sad memories. You know what I mean? I've never heard another song that depresses me the way this one does. Play it again, will you? <laughs> you ever know somebody who enjoyed depression? <laughs> Someone who, who had playfulness with their depression? Did you hear the meta say in that? Someone who enjoyed depression? You say Miss Uthmar is only human. Well, I say she's more. Like all good teachers, she has in her being a touch of the Spirit fired by the dedication of her calling. And he sniffed. Forgive me for crying, but that was one of the most moving speeches I've ever heard. <laughs> Self-reflexivity. <laughs> Awareness of ourselves as we're experiencing ourselves. Lucy says, I'm a real pessimist. And I'm not ashamed to admit it either. I'm proud of it. I was a little discouraged there for a while, but not anymore. Right now I'm very optimistic about my pessimism. <laughs> So the interplay of state upon state. So here's pessimism. And I'm discouraged about my pessimism is really not up to par, not very robust pessimism, skepticism. And, and, now she, and, she, and when she says, I was proud of my pessimism. <laughs> so we're beginning to see the logic that if I embed pessimism inside a pride of pessimism, it makes it stronger. And so be careful what you bring encouragement to. Charlie Brown says, Look here, Lucy, I don't like all this talk about me being wishy-washy. Who do you like better, your mother or your father? Well, I wishy-washy. So there's induction of state. Next year, I'm going to be a changed person. That's a laugh, Charlie Brown. I mean it. I'm going to be strong and firm. Forget it. You'll always be wishy-washy. Why can't I be change just a little bit? I'll be wishy one day and washy the next. <laughs> you need to be more firm, Charlie Brown. If you want to go along with the crowd, go along with the crowd. Be like the willow tree. Stand up and bend whichever way the wind blows. Take my advice, Charlie Brown. Stand, stick up for your right to be wishy-washy. <laughs> so firmness about wishy-washiness, firmness about unfirmness, can blow it out, can make it so that it doesn't compute. So this gives us a, a look at metastates, how we bring one state upon another state, and how this creates different gestalts. In fact, that's the third state we'll be working with. Primary state, meta state, and then when you bring multiple levels of meta states and you texture it and you qualify it, sometimes in that mix, sometimes something more than the sum of the parts will emerge. And we call that a gestalt state. So this now explains logical levels. For those of you who come from NLP, uh, I have to tell you that there's no such thing as logical levels. I've never stumbled over a hunk and said, who left these logical levels here? I've never opened my refrigerator and said, said, somebody has left their logical levels and I think it's been spoiling. Logical levels is just a normalization, in fact, two normalizations stuck together. And, it, and the verb underneath it, what is the verb underneath it? Logical levels. It's actually leveling, layering, we layer one thought upon another, one memory upon another, one intention upon another, one belief upon another, and as we layer it, we start texturing whatever is, it is that we're thinking about. So, so to think about logical levels and the psychologics of how we create different things is to think in a more fluid way so that it's, it's really always fluid and always moving and never a thing, never static, 
So to introduce logical levels, in your notebooks we have a whole series of, of descriptions called meta-questions. This is on what, page 19. Page 20 in your, in your manuals, meta-questions. And you'll see four pages. And then after that you'll see this diagram, facets of the mind. It's a diamond of consciousness. And you can see that looking at that diamond, there's many perspectives, views, facets for experience. So um, the, four, the four pages before that have 26 questions. 26 questions. And each of these questions is a logical level. And in answer to the question, well, which is the highest level? Well, there's none higher because it's all fluid. And... Whatever you believe about something, you could have a value about that. So if we, take, if we start from joyful learning, is joyful learning, is that a belief? Could you believe in, jo in learning being joyful? Yeah, that could be a belief. Is that a value? Could you value joyful learning? Could that be an identity? Is that who you are, a joyful learner? Could that be a decision? I will find joy in learning. Could that be an intention? I will. And, and that's my outcome. That's my agenda. Have joyful learning. Could it be a skill and a capability? That I, I do joyfully learn. I do joyfully learn. So as you go through those 26 questions, we have 26 ways in. So if you ask somebody, what do you think and feel about that? I don't think about anything. Well, what do you believe about? Oh, I believe this. Oh, so you believe that? No, I don't believe that. So what does it mean to you? Oh, it means this. So we have 26 ways in to find the structure of the levels of the mind. And this is going to be really, really important as we start utilizing uh, the meta-state patterns because if one word, one phrase doesn't work, use another. Use meaning, use intention, use belief, use value, use... And you can just see the 26 different questions. Each of these are facets of the same thing, which is experience and how we frame experience. So I'm going to stop right there. Mike, you want to add anything to this basic introduction to Metastates? Well, just like, even though we have 26 uh, questions here, and there's, 20, there's 26 different ways of looking at it, it is all the same thing. It's just different ways of talking about the same thing. I, I've had people sometimes say, well, you know, in, in medicine you have all these, it's, it's meanings, it's values, it's, it's beliefs, it's intentions, it's generalizations. Well, which one is it? And, well, it's all of them. It's, it's all the same. Is it this or that? Yes. It's this and it's that. And so it's different ways of talking about the same thing. And, that, and it becomes useful to know that because knowing the questions and knowing the 26 different ways you have to enter into someone's consciousness can really help to pull out the information that you need. So you can ask a question in a little different way. As Michael said before, if you say, well, what do you, what do you think about that? Because well, I don't think anything. Well, what does that mean to you? Well, what it means to me is. Well, you actually asked them the same question from one level when you said, what do you think about that? But saying, what does that mean to you? Well, well, what type of value does that have for you? You're saying the same thing coming from a different direction and it's going to pull out the information that you need or uh, if, you're, if you're seeking to help someone make a change, it helps them to move in a direction of making the change that they want. But it's really, basically, it's all the same thing. It's different ways of approaching it.